Alright, what's up everyone? It's Patrick from Purple Park Studios. Uh, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing motion or object tracking inside of Blender. Um, now I just want to real quick say this is not a camera tracking tutorial. I will do one on camera tracking uh, later, but today we're going to be tracking motion or objects in Blender. So I'm going to hit A, X, and delete everything. And then I'm actually going to click this plus icon here, go to VFX, and I'm going to open up my motion tracking tab here. I'm just going to pull this down like that. And now I'm going to hit open and I'm going to go to the desktop or go to wherever you have your footage saved and I'm going to load in my footage here. So I'm going to be using this footage right here. It's uh, pre keyed. I will put a link in the description if you want to follow along with this tutorial. So I'm going to hit open clip. And I filmed this on a tripod, um, which I would recommend for motion tracking unless you're going to be doing some more advanced stuff. Um, but for if you're just starting out, I would definitely recommend just filming your footage on a tripod or using footage that is stable. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go up here to uh, the render settings and I'm just going to go to color management and I'm going to change it from filmic to standard. And that will just correct uh, the color here because I shot this in uh, standard. I'm going to go back up here to the resolution and I'm going to change it to 3840 by 2160 because that's what I shot the footage in and I'm going to change the frame rate to 23.98. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to hit prefetch and what that's going to do is that's going to prefetch the video and load it into the computer's memory. So I'm going to hit set scene frames and setting the scene frames will just this clip is 177 frames long so it'll just set it to 177 so I don't have to do it manually. So now when I hit play, the footage is loaded into Blender and we're ready to start tracking. So I'm going to go over here to where it says track and I'm going to click on this little drop down arrow under objects and you can see there's a camera and I don't want to track the camera because this is on a tripod and there is actually no background. It's obviously it's just transparent. So I want to track some motion here. So I'm going to hit this plus icon and I'm going to rename this to ring track because I'm going to be tracking this ring on my finger here. And I didn't put a bunch of track markers on myself because I was planning to track this ring and possibly some of the fingernails and maybe some uh, some of the eyes. And I think that there's enough contrast, especially in the eyes, um, that I didn't need all the track markers. However, if you notice, if I when I hit play, you can notice that there's a lot of motion blur on the hand when it's moving. And that can be an issue for tracking, but I wanted to use this example um, because I think it's important to be able to track footage even if it has a lot of motion blur. Alright, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my tracking settings and I'm going to change this from perspective to a fine and that's going to track the location as well as uh, any rotation or I think uh, slight changes in scale, I believe it tracks that also. And then you want to just check normalize here and what that's going to do is that's just going to, while it's tracking any light changes that happen to the footage, it's going to tell Blender to try and ignore that. So now that I have these settings here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and add a track marker. And I'm going to hit control left click and I'm just going to scale it up a bit on the ring here. And this is a search area, so essentially it's going to tell Blender search in this area and stay locked on this point. And you can see up here, this is the point right here that the tracker is locked onto and that's the point that it's going to be tracking. Now the bigger you scale this up, the more room Blender has, but the slower the track, and we don't need it to be this big, so I'll just put it somewhere like, like that. Now, if you remember earlier, I was saying about this hand having a lot of motion blur on it, and you're going to see, I think, in a second here, if I hit track forward, this is the track forward button. Starts to get lost, and the tracker falls off, and that's just because there's so much motion blur happening that Blender is really unsure where the track marker is, so it loses it. So one way that you can tackle this problem, if I just delete that track marker and go back to the beginning, I'm going to go ahead, control left click, add a track marker and scale up like that. You can track frame by frame. So I'm just going to start tracking frame by frame. I'm just going to monitor this here. So even though there's a lot of motion blur, now it's starting to go off here. So maybe I want to control Z, go back a couple frames. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit S and, and that will just scale this up a tiny bit and it'll essentially just give Blender a new reference point to start tracking from again. So then I'll keep going by frame by frame going forward. It's going to keep clicking this. I'm just left clicking the mouse to track frame by frame. I can go slower if I want to, but right now it seems to be staying locked on. 
and now you can see it lost it there. So I'm just going to hit Control Z to go back a frame, and then I'm going to hit S again to give Blender a new reference point, and I'll track forward frame by frame, and there you can see it's working. Sometimes Blender just will lose its confidence. As a lot of people say, you just have to give it a little pat on the back and say, keep on going, I got you, I'm here to help. <laughs> so anyways, just going to keep on tracking forward like that. And there you can see it lost, so control Z. I'm just gonna hit S again one more time. Keep on tracking forward. Now you can see it's staying on. Should be good here, making it to the end just about. And there we go. Control Z to go back to frame. So there we go. So now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just hit L to lock this tracker in place so nothing can happen to it. And then if I go back to the start and just hit play down here on the uh, timeline, you can see that the tracker is staying right on the ring and that's what we want. So you'll notice that if I select this tracker and I hit play, it's, it appears like it's almost moving like the entire camera too, which could be a cool effect, but that's not what we're going for uh, with this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to uh, where it says camera and just click that. And I'm just gonna hit control left click and add a track marker. And I'm real quick just gonna hit track forward and it's gonna lose it right away but I don't care because I'm just, what I'm doing, there's no background here. So I just need to tell Blender to set up a camera that's gonna essentially be stable. So I'm gonna go over here, to from, go down from track to solve and just make sure the tripod is enabled. And then I'm gonna hit focal length, optical center and radial distortion and hit solve camera motion. And I get an average reprojection error of 0.00, .00 which is perfect, but there's, no, there's nothing happening in the background. So there's really nothing to track. So now all I have to do is hit, go down here, hit up, set up tracking scene and then set as background. If I go into my layout and go into my camera mode, you can see that the footage is now the background. If I hit play, the camera doesn't move, nothing moves, and that's what I want. Now I do need to delete this uh, cube and this plane here, so I'll delete those and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this light as well. And then I'm gonna hit N and select my camera and go to item. And I'm just gonna zero the locations out and I'm gonna hit the X rotation to be 90 and then the Y zero and the Z zero. And then if I go out of my camera mode, I can just hit G and Y, pull the camera back. So that way the camera is lined up to something reasonable uh, pointing towards the cursor. So if I go to add any 3D objects later, everything's gonna be happening right here at the origin. So now I can go back into my motion tracking tab and I'm gonna go back to the ring track. And we've already tracked the motion for this ring and we're gonna do a couple uh, tracks probably for the eyes, uh, but I wanna just get this uh, this one demonstrated here. So I'm gonna select my track and then I'm gonna go under here to geometry and this is under the solve panel, not the track. So if you're still on track, you need to go to solve and just go ahead and make sure that tripod is enabled. And then we're just gonna hit solve object motion. And we have an average reprojection error of 0, 0.00 pixels, which is really good. That's like, that's actually perfect. Um, typically you want anywhere like under one is good. Um, anything above one is usually not good. I mean, for object motion, you can get away with a little bit more, um, but especially for camera tracking, you want at least one or less. So zero is great, and that's exactly what we want. Now, normally you need at least like four to eight tracks, but um, for the effect we're going for here, this one track on the ring will be good enough. So I'm gonna go down to geometry and hit this drop down arrow, and then I'm just gonna hit link 3D markers to mesh. Now, if I go back into my layout, you can see there's this little marker here and what i'm going to do is i'm going to select the marker and it's also under track here so i'm going to just rename this to ring track marker marky marker if i can spell it right and then i'm going to go to my object constraints down here left click and i'm going to add a object solver and under object it's going to be the ring track and under camera it's going to be the camera now you can see it's disappeared so i need to hit set inverse uh, don't ask me why, but that'll just put it back in the right spot. Now, if I go to my camera, you can see our tracker is right here on the ring. And if I hit play, it follows the ring perfectly, which is what I want. All right, so just for example here, um, let me zoom out a bit. Say I did shift A, mesh, and I added in a U or a cylinder because I was going to you know, make a CG ring just for demonstration purposes. So I can go into top view here and I'm gonna scale this down. And it's important to note that this, this little tracker here, this is camera dependent. So once you have your camera set up and you start adding track markers, don't move the camera, don't 
don't even don't even move this stuff here just leave it there you're gonna end up messing up your whole scene you'll be very confused so I'm just gonna hit G move uh, this cylinder over into place and then go one into front view and I'm just gonna hit G and Z and scale it up like that now this isn't a modeling tutorial so I'm not gonna like actually model the ring um, but hint hint maybe like a ring with an emissive texture radiating light would look like you have some kind of ring of power on ha <laughs> trying to be funny here not working um, but anyway you just want to go ahead and line this up and then you can go back into your camera mo uh, mode and just scale that ring like that and maybe rotate it the right way roughly and then if I just go ahead and add a object solver and do object ring track camera set inverse and then I hit play now you can see that the ring is right there now obviously that is looks terrible don't use that ring but if you took the time and modeled something cool and really spent time you know lining it up and whatnot there you go you have a ring attached to your finger and like I said I could real quick just let's see if we go to viewport display here the uh, look dev mode say I did want to give this a new texture real quick and I'll go ahead and turn on bloom go back down to my texture and just give this an emissive shader turn it up to something like 66 and change the color to like you know red or something now this this is terrible this looks terrible but you get the point like you know you could really refine this a lot but now you have like you know, I could even turn it up a lot more too now I've got like you know you, you got something going on there so I'm just for now I'm gonna go back into uh, the modeling mode here and turn off bloom and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna track these eyes here so I'm gonna go back into my uh, motion tracking tab here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to uh, track and I'm just going to hit the plus icon and we're going to call this I L track and now we're going to go ahead and control click and add a new track marker on the I here I'm going to add it right there in the middle and just I'm going to scale it up a bit like that and with the track marker selected I'm going to might as well go to the beginning actually to frame one here just hit G to move that track marker in place like that and with this one, I'm just gonna try tracking through the whole thing. So I'll just hit play like that, and it should stay with it the whole time. So you can see it stayed with it the whole time there. I'm gonna hit L, and then I'm going to hit link 3D markers to mesh. Oh, first I need to solve the camera motion. So I'll just hit solve object motion, and an average rate projection error of zero, zero. Sorry, I said solve camera motion. I meant to say solve object motion. I solve the object motion because we're solving for this object the eye the motion of the eye and then I can hit link 3d markers to mesh if I go into my layout now I have uh, this here I just need to go into the constraints tab and give it a object solver constraint and this time I want it to be the eye left track and the camera is the same and then I'll set the inverse so now if I hit play now I have something tracked on my finger and I have something tracked on my eye and uh, I guess for this tutorial, let's actually, let's go ahead and just track the other eye real quick, um, since that wasn't very hard. So what we'll need to do, just remember it's good to get in this habit, we're going to need to create another separate object track. So I'll hit the plus icon, and if you can guess, this one's going to be called IR track for the right eye. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to control left click, add that track marker, and just scale up a bit. And we should be able to just track forward automatically. It should stay with it. Um, there's enough contrast in the eye there. And you can see that that worked pretty good. So we're, we're in our solve panel here. We still have tripod enabled. We're not changing anything. Just going to hit solve object motion. And now link 3D markers to mesh. Go into the layout. With this second track selected, we should probably rename this real quick here. We'll do this uh, IL track. And then just so we you know, don't get confused, IR track. We'll do that. So on the IR track, we still need to assign a constraint. So we can go to Object Solver, Object, IR track, and the camera's still the same because we only have one camera in the scene, so we'll set inverse. Now if I hit play, it's tracked with the eye. So what we can do here is we can hit Shift A, we'll add in like a UV sphere, scale it down, and again, this is super rough just for demonstration purposes um, scale that down like that and what we can do is we can go to our object solver 
object, IR, camera, camera, set inverse. And now I have something, you know, roughly in place here. Um, and you just want to remember to hide these actual track markers. And honestly, once you have your objects in place, you don't really need them. You could delete them. Um, it's just they're good reference points to have when it comes to lining things up, which I actually didn't, don't even think I did. If I turn these back on, yeah, I didn't actually line this up right, so, which I'm glad that I saw that just for demonstration purposes. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this object constraint here on the sphere that I added. And I'm going to hit G and I'm going to move it into place with the right eye track, if that makes sense. So here we have the ring on my hand and these are the two eyes, the two eye tracks. And we want to make sure this is in the right spot just for scale purposes. So I can hit one for front view. Let me hide this camera here. Scale that down. G, Z, bring it up. Make sure I'm lining it up with the track marker here. Like that. Let's get that right into place there. Now if I go back into my camera, the it's lined up here and I could start, you know, molding this into like some kind of eye if I really wanted to. Um, but for now I'll just maybe leave it small there. I could always add that emissive texture onto it. Turn on bloom. And like I said, this is super rough. <laughs> oh, it was, it's not in the right spot there. We need to add that constraint back in. Object solver, eye track R, camera, set inverse, now. So like I said, it's super rough. You would need to spend a lot of time, um, but I'll show you the final animation in a second, but I hope that this tutorial was helpful. And one thing that I like to do is once I have my scene set up, and this is just kind of like a little, I guess you could say maybe a hack that I've found, um, I like to do shift A, well first I'll hit one to go into front mode, shift A, images as planes, and then I select my footage, and I bring it in, right? Let's just go to uh, this mode here so we can see properly. And then I just go ahead and I line it up with everything else in the scene. Something like that one front view and you just need to refine this a bit here. I'll get it lined right up with the uh, with the background track. And then you can go ahead and hide the background track from the camera so that you only have uh, this one here. And you might just need to refine it a little bit. But now if you were to go ahead and add more CG elements, everything in here is actually in the scene so you can get this, uh, especially if you're using a green screen footage, if you can really get this like reacting to the environment, casting shadows, um, whereas if it's in the background, you're gonna have to do a lot of extra compositing. So that's just kind of a little tip slash hack there. Um, but yeah, so here we go, check out the final animation. Thank <laughs> you.